3.7 solutions and mixtures. Our outcome is I can calculate the number of solute particles, volume, or molarity of solutions. So a solution is a homogeneous mixture. Uh, you take a solute and dissolve it into a solvent. Um, and there are three types of aqueous solutions based on how wide they conduct electricity. So we have our strong electrolytes. These include soluble salts, strong acids, and strong bases. Uh, these compounds completely dissociate when they're added to water. So they're going to break apart into ions. Uh, there are seven strong acids that you should memorize. So hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroidoic, nitric acid, uh, perchloric acid, sulfuric acid, and chloric acid. Uh, strong bases are going to be our uh, group 1 hydroxides, most typically uh, KOH and NaOH. There's also some group 2 hydroxides, but those are only considered soluble when they're under one molar solution. Uh, otherwise, they don't dissociate completely. Weak electrolytes exhibit a small amount of ionization in water, so these are our weak acids and weak bases. Uh, Non-electrolytes uh, are substances that dissolve in water, but they don't produce any ions. So, for example, when something like sugar or ethanol dissolves in um, water, we're not forming ions, we're just forming molecules. So, we're going to want to match each name to these pictures showing the compound in aqueous solution. So, for barium nitrate, uh, barium is Ba and it has a plus 2 charge and that means that nitrate, since that has a minus 1 charge, I'm going to need twice as many nitrates as bariums. So that best matches picture D. We see we have 4 nitrate minus 1s and 2 barium plus 2s. Sodium chloride, we're going to get Na and Cl in an equal ratio, so that matches uh, beaker B with plus one and minus one charges. For potassium carbonate, so potassium has a plus one charge and carbonate has a minus two charge. So I'm going to need twice as many plus ones as minus twos, which matches uh, beaker C. The last one is going to be A. Uh, magnesium has a plus two charge and sulfate has a plus two charge. So those would also exist in a one-to-one -one ratio. So which pitcher would best represent uh, nitric acid? So that's going to be pitcher B. Nitric acid is a strong acid. So we would see all H plus and NO3 minus ions in a one-to-one -one ratio, which is what B is showing. It's showing the cations in a one-to-one -one ratio with the anions. Why aren't any of these a good pitcher for acetic acid, which is a weak acid? So a weak acid would show uh, a partial dissociation. So there should be a mixture then of undissociated acetic acid and dissociated ions, so H plus and acetate minus ions. None of these pitchers are showing us partial dissociation. So this comes uh, into play later on whenever we're going to study how to find the pH of a weak acid because we can't just say that the concentration of the acid is equal to the concentration of H plus because it depends on how much it dissociates. So molarity, uh, this is usually how we express concentration. Uh, it is moles of solute per liter of solution in liters. So when the concentration of a solution is accurately known, um, we call it a standard solution. So a common practice that chemists may do is to uh, test a solution that they use in a reaction so that they very accurately know its concentration. This allows them to get more precision in their calculations. So here's a couple of uh, molarity problems. So the sodium level in a patient's blood is measured at 137 millimoles per liter. So if we have 15 milliliters of blood drawn from the patient, uh, what mass of sodium would be present? 
So this is a very um, common type of calculation that someone who is in the medical field or a nurse might have to make, right? Where we might need to know, um, you know, a particular mass of a medication or something like that to give to a patient based on a concentration in their blood. So first I'm going to start with that 15 milliliters and I'm just converting that into uh, liters by dividing by 1,000. So this is my molarity, which is 137 millimole per liter. And I'm just converting the uh, millimoles into regular moles here. And then I'm just using my molar mass of sodium to convert moles of sodium into grams of sodium. So this is what we get here. Uh, in the next one, we want to know the concentration of each ion whenever we dissolve 125 grams of potassium phosphate into 250 milliliters of solution. So I'm just going to take that um, information I've been given that there's this many grams in this much solution. Then I changed my grams to moles. So right now my units are moles per milliliter. So then I just need to change that milliliter into liters. So then my only units left are moles over liters. So when we add this um, K3PO4 into water, it's going to dissociate into uh, 3K plus ions and one uh, phosphate minus 3 ion. So that means that the concentration of K is three times the concentration of K3PO4 and that the concentration of um, these two is going to be equal because they're a one-to-one -one ratio. So one of the ways that we can make solutions is to make them directly using pure solids. So in your unit packet, I think I um, put the questions in the wrong order. Uh, I just had the wrong introductory text with the wrong question. So if things seem like they're a little bit out of order here for you, um, I'm just going to go a little bit uh, off flip-flop two questions. So um, we then measure a specific mass of a solid, and then we uh, bring the solution up to the desired volume with distilled water. So um, the units for molarity are moles per liter of solution not liters of solvent. Why does this different matter? So the solute takes up volume as well. This is a way to help account for that volume. We also have to deal with the fact that we might have intermolecular attractions that form that cause the volume to decrease. So what was originally a thousand milliliters of water suddenly is 999 milliliters of water. Uh, so we have to account for that possible change in volume. Uh, in B, we want to show the math to support that if I want to prepare 25 milliliter of quarter molar solution of NaCl, I'm going to need 0.125 moles. So molarity is moles per liter. I know the molarity and I know the liters. I just converted 500 milliliters into liters. And on top here, I'm solving for moles. So here's what I get. So if you measure out too much solid, why is it a bad idea to return it to the original container? So you may contaminate the uh, stock of the solid, um, which can cause impurities in future solutions that you prepare. Uh, if you have some solid that's stuck to your weighing paper or your away boat, uh, you're going to want to kind of fold the paper in half so it's a little funnel. And then you can use distilled water to wash the solid into the flask. So we use a wash bottle for that. Uh, why do we only want to half fill the bulb of the flask? So when that bulb is half filled, it's going to be very easy to swirl the solution. And that's going to help that solid to dissolve. Uh, when do you know that you've measured the correct amount of solvent into the flask? So the bottom of the meniscus, the curve of the water, the bottom of that curve touches the top of the uh, etched line in the neck of the volumetric flask. 
So why do we use a volumetric flask as opposed to just an Erlenmeyer flask? So that's because of the accuracy of the glassware. So in the video, the volumetric flask had printed right on it that it measures 500 plus or minus 0.2 milliliters. So when you use that volumetric flask, what you think is 500 milliliters could be uh, 500.2 or it could be uh, 499.8. But that's a pretty small margin of error there. With the Erlenmeyer, it said plus or minus 5%. So 5% 5 of 500 is 25 milliliters. So what you think is 500 milliliters could be anything from 475 to 525. So we use that volumetric flask so that we can more accurately measure out that volume uh, and we know the concentration matches our intended concentration. So another way to uh, make solutions is to create uh, concentrated stock solutions. And then you can just dilute those solution down to whatever concentration you're looking for. Uh, so this is actually, for me, easier, uh, easier way to prepare solutions. Um, I don't have to like stir any solid in. Um, it's a much easier method for me. So this is how I prefer to do this. So I'll make a stock solution that's a very high concentration um, or I'll order it from a chemical company at a very high concentration. That's also going to save on things like um, shipping and, you know, all of the resources that go into um, getting that to me in smaller volumes. So um, when diluting a solution, remember that the moles of solute before and after are the same. So a helpful equation for this is M1V1 equals M2V2. So some of you are familiar with um, a version of this that's for titrations. I don't recommend that you use this for titrations. It's not really meant for that. Um, I recommend you use stoichiometry in that situation. But here we're just trying to dilute a solution. So I want to show work to support that I need 10 milliliters of this uh, 0.25 molar sodium chloride stock solution. So I called my concentrated solution 1 and my diluted solution 2. So here I'm solving for the milliliters of my stock solution that I need. So I need 10 milliliters. Uh, why should you pour the stock solution into another beaker before you measure it with a pipette? Uh, we want to avoid any possibilities where the solution could become contaminated. So sticking a pipette into your solution is a great way to contaminate it. Here's another question that's kind of working with this uh, concentration concept here. Um, but this one involves density. So we're given the density of this ethanol, and we know how much of it we have. So if we know volume and we know density, we can solve for grams here. So I'm going to first convert my milliliters into centimeters cubed. And then here, I'm just using the density uh, to change it into grams of alcohol. So at this point, I've got it into grams of alcohol, and I can divide it by uh, the molar mass here to get the moles uh, of ethanol. So here, I just need to take the moles and divide it by my total volume of solution, and this gives me my molarity. So either way, wh whatever type of problem you're being presented with, we're trying to figure out how many moles in what volume of solution. So here are a couple of different solutions that uh, a chemist might have to perform or have to make for whatever reason. So the first one, we're looking at a solid salt. So this is called a hydrate. Basically, it means that for every one of these nickel two chloride um, ions, uh, formula units, there's six water molecules attached to it. 
Uh, so we're going to have to consider that in the molar mass whenever we do our calculation. So this is a solid. We're going to measure it out in grams using a scale and then dissolve into water using a volumetric flask. We add distilled water to bring the solution up to the correct volume. So I know I need one liter of 0.5 moles per one liter solution. So I basically need half a mole. So one mole of this compound, that's NiCl2 plus six water molecules, is 237.69. So my answer is just half that number. So I would measure this out with a scale and then pour it into my volumetric flask and then bring it up to the uh, correct volume. In B, we have a solution that needs to be diluted. So I need to calculate the volume of that stock solution to produce my desired solution. Uh, so I'm just going to use my M1V1 equals M2V2. I solve and I get this number of milliliters. So now I can measure this out using a pipette and then I can add it to a volumetric flask and then bring the solution up to volume uh, with distilled water. In C we have another solid so again we need to uh, weigh this out in grams. So again I'm making one liter of this concentration so that'll give me moles of my solid then I just need to convert moles of my solid into grams. All of these solutions were trying to make the same volume and the same molarity. So all of these solutions require half a mole of whatever compound. So the question is, how do we get that half of mole? Do we measure it with as a solid or do we measure it as a volume if it's um, a solution? So compare heterogeneous and homogeneous mixtures, provide an example of each. So a homogeneous mixture is evenly distributed. It has the same properties throughout. So if you were to randomly sample it from a bunch of different places, they would all be the same. A heterogeneous mixtures are ones that are different. So for example, if you look at something like um, muddy water or um, something like uh, whipped cream or something like that, uh, we could have a heterogeneous mixture uh, where we have a bunch of uh, different properties in different places within the substance. Uh, three errors that can occur when making solutions. I mean, there's more than that, but uh, we could incorrectly measure out the uh, mass of a solid, or we could accidentally add too much or too little water to the volumetric flask. Um, we could not accurately know the concentration of our stock solution. Um, we can mismeasure the stock solution whenever we measure its volume. So lots of ways that errors can occur. And then there's just, you know, human errors, like poor experimental technique. Maybe you don't get all of the solid off of the filter paper. All of those are things that can go wrong.